open your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12. We began to look at this last week, and we only got through, what, two verses? I believe it was last week. And I want to go a little further today, but Hebrews chapter 12. Some things are weight, but they're not sin. And some things are sins, but they're not weight. It's important to understand the weights in your life. And the word there for weight in the Greek is, the word actually means that which is bulky, that which weighs down, that which hinders progress. So he says, lay aside the weight and the sin that easily slows you down. You have to ask yourself, what kind of things are weights in my life? What kind of things are distractions to me spiritually? What kind of things are, that are bulky, where I can't move in God? It affects my prayer time, it affects my praise, it affects my worship, it affects my service, it affects my giving. I've got to lay that stuff aside, no matter what it is. You know, that certain people in your life can be awake. Did you know that? Certain people in your life can be awake. He said, lay it aside. And then do what, Pastor Ryan? What? What? You know, the Olympics are going on right now. Actually, Paul, I didn't plan it this way, going to the Olympics. Well, Paul borrows this phraseology and the analogy he's going to use here from the ancient Olympic Games. They were going on then. What's happening right now over in Beijing, China, is the oldest traditional historic event that happens in the world. This still goes on to this very day. It's happening right now. And he says, run. Run what? The race, the word race there is the Greek word agon. It's also translated fight in 1 Timothy 6.12. But Paul tells me to fight the good fight of faith. This is the word there for fight and the word here for race is the same word, agon. It denotes training. What you have to go through strenuously to be in tip-top shape to accomplish what you have to do in those Olympic games that they had back then and going on right now. What do you think Michael Phelps had to go through to break every record imaginable? And he did that last night. Unbelievable. We were sitting watching this, this kid in total unbelief because of what he's done. He's broken every record that you could break in swimming. And the point I wanted to make is he had to go through some strenuous, intense training. He had to go through agon, what we call agony, okay? He had to go through strenuous, extensive training. Very disciplined, very structured. Had to follow all the orders of the agon. And that's what Paul is talking about here. He says, so run the race with patience that is set before you. Then what? Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto who? Know your problem. Know people. Know your boss. Know your children. That's been our problem. I need to ask you, what are you looking at right now? What is it you're focusing in on that you're looking at right now that can be a distraction to you? Because in the race, they had to keep their eyes on the prize. They could not look to the left. They couldn't look to the right. They couldn't look behind them. You have to keep your eyes on the prize. So our prize is our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody says, look at the Jesus who is what? So your walk of faith starts with Jesus, and guess what? It ends with Jesus. We left off there last week. We can make the first question. Before the what? Before the what? 
Next verse. For consider him who endures such hostility from sinners against himself. Lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. Wow. Consider him. Now, first of all, we're looking at Jesus. He says here, consider him. Now, I want to really pick up here. Consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself. As a ministry, and you as an individual, we on a constant basis uh, have a hostility coming at us from sinners. You ever try to witness somebody, they just didn't want to hear it? You ever try to share Christ with someone, and they were just vulgar, even profane towards you? Consider this. Now, we haven't gotten to the extent that Jesus has gotten it. There's a contradiction of sinners. Your lifestyle, how you are supposed to live your life, contradicts how sinners live their lives. You're not better than them, more special than them, and God does not love Christians more than he loves sinners. I don't know if you understood that. Don't think for once that God loves us better than he loves people out there that are robbing and stealing and smoking and drinking and lying and cheating. No, no, no. God does not love you anymore. God so loved the world. So please, let's not get on our spiritual high hogs and think we're all of that. You are what you are by the grace of God. Thank God for his salvation. Thank God for the blood of Jesus that has never lost his power. So consider him. Let's make sure we're not... See, we're always considering ourselves. It's all about me. All about my happiness, my fulfillment, my gratification. What makes me happy? So we can have a tendency to come up with another gospel that's according to me. This is how I am. I've always been like this. Well, me, myself, I, I think this. It's not even about you. Here's the point. It was never about you. It's always about you. Always. I can't even fulfill my destiny unless I center my life around him. I can't. As a minister, we can't fulfill our destiny as a, as a people unless this church is Christ-centered. I was talking to a young man late last night. He was talking about his church and his bishop and some problems going with the church. And I can just be real with him. Most churches are very personality-centered. It's centered around the pastor, the apostle, the bishop, whomever who's in charge. It's very personality-centered. That's an abomination. The church has got to be Christ-centered. This can't be based on Apostle Ella Smith. It's based upon the chief apostle, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He dictates. He gives direction. He, he ever lives to make intersection for us. Not Ella Smith. So when the ministry can center around a personality or the man of God, the man of faith and power for the hour, that church is in very serious trouble. We must center everything around Christ. It doesn't matter even who's preaching. If Christ is in charge of the right word will come forth. You will come to some Sundays, I want to be here. Apostle, not a word, apostle, don't worry about apostle. Be concerned about Jesus looking unto who? Yeah. No, the apostle. Jesus. No, the elder. Jesus. No, the bishop. Looking unto Jesus. When we understand this, our whole mindset, how we think, Shifts. It's not based on building, not based on people, 